in the normal course of events, when something really has your attention, whether it be a job interview or a speech or whatever the case may be, you wipe your brow, you squeeze the tension and anxiety and sweat off your brow, we put it into the jar, there's a little bit of sweat in this jar, we would call this, you know, the, you know, the sweat jar, so to speak. You might say, well, what's the, what, what's the point here? What I'm trying to drive at is when we go into combat and we go over enemy territory, that's a different deal. Now I wipe my brow, I squeeze the tension and anxiety and sweat from going in over enemy territory into a jar, totally different deal. The next condition, what's it like getting shot at over enemy territory? Again, I wipe my brow, I squeeze it in the jar, Again, different deal. What's it like, the third condition, now there's three or four enemy behind me, they're shooting at me, I'm in a real jam, I can't get the plane to do what I want it to do. What's that like? Again, I wipe my brow, I squeeze it into the jar, looks like this. The fourth condition, what's it like now when I'm hit over enemy territory and the other enemy planes are coming in to finish me? You might think the jar four looks like this, but it doesn't. The fourth condition, when you're hit, losing control of the plane, looks instead <laughs> like this. And it's not what you think it is, it's just Gatorade. <laughs> but what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is, in the first three conditions, you can force the genie back down into the bottle. In the fourth condition, the genie's out of the bottle. Fear left unchecked causes panic. When we start to panic, it's all over. We cannot go into combat and be successful when we panic. I will tell you, as business uh, men and women out there in the, in the world today, in the world economy, the tension and anxiety of, of what you go through, you need to have some kind of a system to help you navigate through that because it's tough and left unchecked, it's going to cause some serious health problems later in your lives. Bill's air combat presentation is not just about flying fighters in combat. It's about a way of life and the lessons of life which are normally only learned by those who must back up their performance with their life. Bill Driscoll's intense level of training, concentration, and teamwork required to succeed in air combat is what he will direct to your group. Bonnie Blair won four Olympic gold medals in three different Olympics. Nobody ever done that before or since. Dramatic what Bonnie did. And somebody asked Bonnie, they said, Bonnie, how did you do it? How did you dominate the world stage over 12 years and be the top person so long and so dramatically? And Bonnie said very simply, I kept three things in mind. Number one, I approached each practice like it was the last practice before leaving for the Olympics. You know how productive we all are the day before going on vacation? That's how she approached each practice. Number two, she said, I approached each competition like it was the Olympics. So when I got there, in my mind, I'd been there many times before. And the third thing she said was, I was willing to not put out a good effort or a really good effort. I wanted to push myself as hard as I could to see how far I could take it. And this is a woman who worked out six to eight hours a day, seven days a week for ten months, brought herself regularly to vomit. That's how hard she worked out. But she was willing to make that kind of an effort. And as a result, Bonnie Blair won four gold medals in three different Olympics. She's probably the best example of self-discipline I've ever seen. What I like about her self-discipline is she just didn't have it for one day or one week or one month. She had it always. Her self-discipline was not situational. It was all-encompassing. Bill utilizes extensive audience participation to enhance his presentation, and he'll weave answers into the fabric of your business as they relate to your company's performance in a manner which is both entertaining and humorous. You're the pilot of this airplane. This is an F-14 Tomcat. You started this thing at about 380 knots, which is okay, but not a great speed. As you pitch up, this is a MiG-29, and he started faster than you. Because the reason you know this is because he's able to get up above you, so you're thinking, well, he's faster than I am. I don't like that. I'm, I'm a little more than mildly concerned that he's faster than me to start the fight. Yeah. Uh, at this point, you're in a bit of a bind. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we did, you know, exactly as you say, we take the airplane, we rudder it hard. You know, I'm talking not, you know, this kick is it. kick it. it. The folks from Boston will appreciate this. We're going to park the airplane. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, we, we put the airplane right here. Now we're maybe 80 to 70 knots, just barely able to hold the thing. When we do that, what he does is gently flies out like that. And as he does that, he then decides to, you know, dive down. You're sitting here at 80 knots. What do you do? And you got, and you got him. Mm -hmm. So you, you would go after the kill? I would. Okay. How about you, sir? What do you think? I'd get out of there. You'd get out of there. <laughs> what would you do? I wouldn't be in that position. You wouldn't be in that position. <laughs> I, 
I, I understand. How about you, sir? Take him out. Okay. I'm not saying many times in fighter tactics there are several different answers to the same problem. I'm not necessarily saying it was the right thing, but think as salespeople now, a customer that you've worked with for two years, an account that's really important to you, and, and, a, and a big account, and the fellow that you've been working with or the gal says to you late one evening, write it up. Can you bring it by my house later tonight? I'm leaving town tomorrow. Are you going to write it up and bring it by later that night, or are you going to make some kind of a reason? I got it. Well, I can't do it tonight, but maybe tomorrow. What Take are you going to do? Take them out. That's right. The lesson of all this is when it matters most, as it did in this case, and one big mistake was going to finish us off, no matter what, don't ever quit. Nothing is more certain than defeat for the pilot or the salesperson who quits when it matters most. That's the point. How many people have been to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Washington, D.C.? Pretty, pretty impressive uh, operation. Uh, it opens to the public at 7.30 in the morning. It closes at 3.30 in the afternoon. And the fact that it closes to the public, realize the, the, the men and women who stand guard, stand guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week, regardless of the weather. And we've been doing that since 1931. It's a very special place for the military. Now, this past fall, Hurricane Isabel was, was pointed right at that area. So one of the generals called up the commanding officer of this, of this uh, regiment, uh, who was a major, and said, Major, I want you to stand down the watch. They're forecasting winds of more than 125 miles an hour rain of more than four inches per hour. Stand down the watch. I don't want to put the men at risk. The major said, sir, you don't want to put the men at risk? That's right. Stand down the watch. I don't want the men at risk. And the commander said, yes, sir. Uh, I heard you, yes, sir. So what he did was he went out himself and stood two four-hour watches in this 120 mile an hour wind and four inches of rain per hour. Very simply, he said, I was told not to put the men at risk, so I stood the watch myself. It was a privilege. We have men and women over in Iraq right now risking their lives. I'm certainly not going to let a little wind and rain stand in the way of standing this watch. Would you follow that major into combat? You bet your life you would. Recognize that the answers to these questions are not given with words. They're given with actions. Leaders that are serious about leading let the actions speak, not the words. In the words of the poet, what lies behind us and what lies ahead of us is of little importance with what lies within us. I would like to wish each and every one of you and your families a long and peaceful life. And in the business world in 2004, good luck and good hunting. Thank you. Bill's message is based on his own combat experiences. On one of his combat missions, Bill, along with five other Navy fighters, was jumped by 24 enemy fighters. A huge dogfight ensued. When it was over, the Navy fighters shot down six enemy planes with no shoot downs by the enemy. Bill and his men shot down three of those enemy jets. They also saved the lives of two severely threatened squadron mates by initiating several suicidal counterattacks against enemy fighters. For this action, Bill Driscoll was nominated for the Medal of Honor. He is incidentally one of the highest decorated living naval flight officers of the past 50 years. Bill believes the key concepts responsible for victory in air combat are equally valid for success in business. Competition in today's global business environment is becoming increasingly more fierce and unforgiving. In the future, these conditions will only intensify. However, the underlying principles of any successful business have many similarities with Bill's work. Air combat is incredibly intense work. It's all about teamwork and doing the right thing at the right time under acute pressure. Your life or death hangs in the balance. But it's the little things that make such a big difference. Your people will be riveted to their seats during the air combat presentation. They'll walk away recharged and excited about their own unique challenges. And they'll never forget the key lessons of Bill Driscoll's air combat presentation. How to maximize your peak pressure performance.